Welcome to part six of my family pattern video learning module series on the Big Y700 DNA test. In this module, we're going to conduct an experiment. And when I talk about an experiment, we're going to use scientific research methods to strategically and methodically answer specific research questions that we may not have even thought it was possible and why DNA, and more specifically, the big Y7 DNA test can really help us do that. Now, this is the last in the six modules, and we're going to use targeted DNA testing. That is, being careful and methodical about who we select or hope to select to participate in taking a Y DNA test and to the end of uh, answering a specific research question. Now we're going to talk about splitting branches and the image down below is a snapshot from the time tree and what we want to do is can we get a DNA tester, a Y DNA tester, another male that descends from a specific line that when his results post might help us to answer some uh, specific genealogical questions that we have. If we do this and we be really strategic about it, we can improve the accuracy of our results. And this is going to show up in a couple different ways. It will increase or become more accurate our time to most recent common ancestor because we know the when we increase the sample size of the testers within a haplogroup, our results are going to become more refined. And also, the more testers we get to help us remove things that I've talked about in previous videos, like private variants, um, if we get somebody to test who has that same mutation or private variant, that will create new haplogroups. And that additional piece of information can help us answer so many research questions that we never before thought possible. So in this particular video, I'm going to show you two different examples of what I mean by an experiment and splitting branches. We're going to look at a mystery autosomal DNA match, and we're going to figure out how we can better inform our research strategy in determining how that individual is related to us by looking at new or additional Y-DNA results associated with that individual. And we're also going to look at another example using big Y uh, DNA to determine or get, again, better informed on where our ancestor might have been from before they migrated to wherever they ended up. And by ancestral origins, I'm really thinking about the country of origin or a region of the globe where they might have likely originated. So the first example, we're going to look at a situation where I found a mystery autosomal DNA match. It was part of a genetic network. And as you can see on both images to the left, you have on the top portion of that is my line. And I descend through James H. Wilson that you see there. And when I started looking at my DNA matches, um, I noticed that there was this other Wilson family that was part of this genetic network, but I couldn't figure out how. And when we looked at the genetic network, this match matched several other people that descended from uh, John Wilson, born 1784, and his brother, William Wilson, born 1793. And you can see the number of matches I identified as part of that genetic network. This unlinked family cluster, this unknown family that looks for certain to be part of mine, but I couldn't figure out how, there were... A lot of DNA matches um, from multiple children descending from a William W. Wilson. And you can see there that there are a total of um, 
17 matches descending down through there and through different child lines. And I knew there had to be a connection, but autosomal DNA just wasn't giving me enough. And it didn't help me point the direction where I could look for records um, outside of DNA to help me figure this out. So what I did is I recruited an individual. I am tester A in the image to the left. And I recruited a individual who descends from William W. Wilson, um, a direct male descendant, of course. And I invited them to take the big Y700 DNA test. When the results came back, it said our time to most recent common answer, ancestor was 18, born around 1814. This didn't quite fit right for me based off of what I've known. I know that a lot, I've done descendancy research on everybody going back from John Wilson, uh, who was born about 1715. And I couldn't figure out how this individual fit in, especially with that 1814 approximate approximation for our common ancestor. But I did note that amongst our results, there were three private variants. And I thought, if I could just find other people to test to help eliminate some of those private variants, meaning they would share some, if not all of those private variances, and help to refine my results. So what I did is I recruited another individual on my side of the equation. I descend from James H. I found somebody that descends from James's brother, Robert, and I had him test. Now, when I tested uh, this individual, and I've labeled him as F, we shared three private variants. Well, that's the same number of variants as between me and B. And so this caused Family Tree uh, DNA to look at this and kind of say, well, you know, maybe this estim estimation of 1814 isn't exactly right. The number of mutations, you know, isn't figuring out well between all parties here. And so they refined the estimate. Again, with a larger sample size, they can become more informed on, on what they do. Now, keep in mind, they don't really see how we're all related unless I specify that. And... But they said our new uh, time to most recent common ancestor is now 1767. Again, I still need more information. So what I did is I recruited another individual who descends from William W. Wilson, Tester C. And I thought, well, if I had three private variants between myself and B, how can I try to reduce uh, that on that side? Well... This tester, tester C, only shares one private variant with tester B. And they actually uh, create a new haplogroup, which I'll show you in a second. But all of us are part of the same haplogroup that you see up on top, uh, the Y106972. But now with four testers, different levels of private variants or non-matching variants, family tree DNA can have a better, their algorithm can better predict, and it pushed back our time to most recent common ancestor to 1743. Now, let me show you the uh, haplogroup associated with that smaller cluster, the one descending from William W. Wilson. We knew they both descended from them because I recruited them as such. And it gave a new time to most recent common ancestor for this new haplogroup, which is Y98226. And if you've watched some of my other videos on this topic, you, you probably know a little bit about where this is ultimately heading. But this 1809 puts their common ancestor be born about that, which is probably the individual who is the father of this William W. Wilson. So kind of looking at this, this has really given me 
a lot of great information. And in fact, if you watch some of other videos, as I alluded to, I was able to determine how this other haplogroup or this unlinked family cluster of Y98226, how they fit into mine. They actually descend through another brother of what you see on my line is James. And it all kind of fits out. And so the conclusions I draw from this, why splitting the branch was very beneficial for me in this situation, include increasing the sample size helped to reduce the number of private variants, which allowed for the creation of a new haplogroup, which you see there, the Y98226. But it also helped to refine the time to most recent common ancestors because, again, if we know everything, uh, anything about statistics, the larger our sample size, the greater we can estimate the population's true mean, or in this case, that time to most recent common ancestor. And again, this helped me out tremendously, not only to reshape how I was thinking about the situation because I really couldn't see the picture clear enough until I saw this. And this really helped me to then go to the traditional records and actually find a document that didn't conclusively link them in, but really, from my opinion, without a doubt, the uh, indirect evidence did connect them into my family tree. Let me share with you a second example where Big Y DNA operated as an experiment to really help me understand a little bit more about my McMaster's line. So you can see in the image to the left, I descend from Mary McMaster's, who is a daughter of Thomas McMaster's. She has two other brothers, Robert and Thomas. And I recruited two other individuals to take a Y DNA test because I'm really trying to figure out where did these McMasters come from? All that I knew is that Mary, Robert, and Thomas were born in the U.S., but I didn't know where Thomas was born. I do know that Thomas arrived the country about 1740, but I don't know where. I don't know if that was from Northern Ireland, from Scotland, or maybe even somewhere else. So I recruited two individuals to help represent my line of my McMaster's line, since I obviously don't descend from my Mary McMaster's, you know, there's no, there's not going to be a uh, male McMaster's descending from that. So found those uh, descendants from Robert and Thomas. One thing else that I thought that would be very helpful is when I was looking at my autosomal DNA matches and I found a genetic network that was clearly descending from Thomas McMaster's and other McMaster's not shown on here. I found one that was descending from a Robert McMaster's who was born about 1794 in Ireland. And I recruited an individual to take the big Y700. It was a match, so I upgraded it to the full 700. And hoping, my hypothesis is that depending on where he fits, so where the M3 uh, match fits within the time tree uh, if it is further in the past than where Thomas McMaster's uh, his haplogroup rests then maybe it would tell us that we are probably from Ireland before coming to the US if the M3 results are you know, closer to present day than my Thomas McMaster's haplogroup, meaning it's a child haplogroup of Thomas McMaster's haplogroup, then it's probably not going to be as certain to tell me that my line came from um, Ireland. But let's take a look at the results. So this is the results for when I had my two uh, representatives of my McMaster's line test, M1 and M2. 
You can see there that the haplogroup that it was created um, is there in orange. And the common ancestor was born about 1674. Now, it's probable that this, if accurate, that this representation of that ancestor is not Thomas when he was born, but probably Thomas's father based upon, you know, a 1674. Thomas was probably born probably around 1700 if you kind of look at the data that limited data that I have. So that's what I was looking at. Once I recruited uh, the M4 to take, uh, sorry, the M3 uh, match to take the big Y, it adjusted. Again, sample size increased and it gave me a new slightly um, older time to most recent common ancestor being born about 1663. Still not out of the, the realm for being Thomas, Thomas McMaster's um, father possibly grandfather. Um, but what was interesting here is that unbeknownst to me, even though I recruited uh, uh, test taker M3, there was another one in the uh, pool of, of big Y700 results that was unbeknownst to me only because they did not have a family tree there. And they ended up being... Um, uh, uncle, or I should say grand uncle and grand nephew in their relationship. And you see their, uh, their relationship there, but it is their, uh, haplogroup is a child haplogroup to mine. So it doesn't really say much. What it could basically say is that either my line and started in, um, Scotland and a descendant from, let's say, Thomas McMaster's father or grandfather migrated to Ireland before coming to the U.S. Um, that's what it could say. Um, or, you know, it still could say that mine ended up in Ireland and that's why, you know, the M3 and M4, why theirs was born in Ireland. But what we do know also from a historical context is that the plantation of Northern Ireland, mainly when uh, the British had uh, individuals from Scotland and England uh, uh, migrate to Northern Ireland in order to really, to be, to be honest here, to displace the native Irish. That happened about 1610 and most people migrated there within those first 15 years. So it's within the realm of possibility that my ancestor could be from Ireland. I need more data points and I'm currently working on doing those. But you can see how having more data points can help you better visualize the picture. So I'm a really big fan of the Big Y 700 and the more people you get to test and thinking about it strategically, either increasing the number of individuals within your branch to be tested or finding those individuals who you think might be in a haplogroup, um, a child haplogroup, or even a parent haplogroup of your own to test will help you to refine your matches and help you, if not answer that question specifically, will actually help you to think about the situation in a different way that you couldn't see it unless you had more data points. So I hope you enjoyed this particular uh, learning module and I encourage you to watch some of the other learning modules that came before it if you haven't already. And I thank you very much.